ecologist Megan Pettit with the Whiteside County Soil and Water Conservation District. She'll give us information on conservation and how to protect our soil, water, and habitat. Now here is Megan Pettit with Gary Detterman. And uh, I think I've been calling you Megan Prophet. It's Megan Pettit. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about that. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> now, um, you, of course, are in a week early. I am, You got yes. something special coming up yeah. next Tuesday? Um, next week, I have to go to a three-day training in Champaign for work. So it's kind of hard to be here when I'm in Champaign. So what's all going to be taking place? It's a soil health training. So I'm um, going to learn about soil health and do some field work and see a, like a pit, a dug pit, and... Just a lot of cool stuff. It works towards my conservation planner certification, which is something I have to have for work. So this is something that you really need to do for your profession. Yes. So is this, I mean, are are there other things that you're going to be needing to Um, do as you continue in your career? Yeah. So like right now I work, I've pretty much got my conservation planner level one done, but I have to make it to level four um, so that I... Like right now I have, when I do job sheets or seating sheets, I have to take them and have someone sign them for me. Like, cause I am not qualified enough to do it on my own. Um, so once I hit level four, I'll be able to do all my own stuff and not have supervision. Well, that'll be great. Yeah. Now I want to tell you that I had a couple of people comment to me after last month's show about the woolly mammoths. Okay, so the Woolly Mammoth is 2027, right? That same company, they put a date of 2025 on the Tasmanian Tiger, which is interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's two years from now. So in a couple of years, the Tasmanian Tiger will be back. That's what they said. And then in four years, we can see Woolly Mammoths once again roaming the earth. Yeah. It's (laughs) kind of weird to think about, but yeah. So uh, I don't have any notes no, in front of me. You brought the I'm only sorry. sheet. That's okay. So I'll just uh, have to so listen I, to you. Yeah. So I started March 1st of last year. So it oh. is my one year anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yeah. You guys have been listening to me for a whole year now. Doing, which doing is a great job. A little scary, but no, that's you're, okay. You're doing fine. So what are we talking about today? So um, I have livestock. Um, and I have a baby donkey that is currently full of sandburrs. So I figured I probably wasn't the only one. Um, so how to get rid of sandburrs. The biggest thing that came up was mowing your lawn, and that will prevent them from producing a seed head. But unfortunately, mine are in my donkey pasture, which is a little bit hard to mow. That's why it's my donkey pasture. And I don't know if she just rolled in them or what but she is head to toe covered in them so i'm gonna have to start cutting them out of her yeah <laughs> uh, you know it would be hard to take off you'd have to have gloves on yeah they're yes when you're a pet nerd and you find one like they hurt yeah the poor little thing is gonna just be real patchy and have big <laughs> chunks of missing hair <laughs> um how long have you had the donkey uh i got them um, her mom and i her mom and dad i got last june or july and then she was born september 13th september 12th so i mean you just have the one donkey two i have mom and dad you got mom and And dad she was born september 12th all right she was a little bit of a surprise didn't know it when i bought them that they were pregnant well that was it's a bonus yeah she's been she's been a lot of fun (laughs) Uh, and then fall fertilizing can help produce a thick mat of grass that'll crowd out um, sandburr seedlings in the spring and you can also apply pre-emergent herbicide uh, late in the winter and to early spring, depending on the zone you're in. That's probably going to be my best bet, just because I, you know, I can't. What about now, I would imagine you probably have dogs and cats and things like that. I, yes. I would imagine they're getting into the sand burrs as yes, well. Yes, they are. My, I, I have four dogs. Um, and yes, they, they come, if I let them roam outside of their fence a little too long, they come back covered in them as well, which is so fun. (laughs) It sounds like it's fun. So fun. fun. Um, and then, so the bird migration is taking place. I've noticed there's a lot of geese flying over lately. Um, I've seen a couple really big flocks over my house and when I wrote this piece down, it was a few weeks ago. So 
There are a number of eagles out on the Mississippi, kind of between Albany and Cordova, and I see them a lot. Um, they're starting to be less and less of them, though, because they start to move out of the area in March. Um, but they are still out there. I think I was out in that area Sunday, and I saw a bunch of them. Well, my wife and I were up in Sabula for breakfast, and then we crossed the Sabula mm -hmm. Savannah Bridge. There had to have been two to three hundred eagles yeah. in that one to two mile yeah. span. It was just incredible. I know. That's how it's been in Cordova, too. Um, and there was a lot of people pulling over on the side of the road yes. to take pictures. And, like, just if you're going to do that, be careful because not all of us are looking at the eagles. Well, yeah, because <laughs> when we were crossing the bridge, some truck had run into the back of a yeah. car. So, yeah, it was yep. not you gotta good. you got to think about all that. Yes. Um, and then I'm starting to notice more pelicans and gulls now there. Yeah. And the pelicans are huge, and there's a ton of them. So... Usually there's a very large number of them. There's, I think every time I go by, there's more and more. So we'll see that in a... Now, I see the pelicans primarily on the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. but are, are they on the Rock River? Do you see them at, like, lakes? So I see lakes? them on... I don't... I see them on the Mississippi a lot because okay. I'm in the Albany Cordova area. Right. Um, and that little slough or whatever it is. Right. Um, I don't notice. I guess I don't get around to like the Rock River area mm -hmm. as much, um, but I haven't noticed them out there. I did notice, however, swans in yeah. a couple cornfields, yeah. which is interesting. Um, I guess I never paid attention and still, until I started doing this, but I definitely saw a, several flocks of swans like taking a break in a cornfield, which is interesting yeah. that's not usually you know yeah. where you'd find them so you got the bigger birds but of course you know like the red winged blackbird yep. the robins are here so yeah that was my next um the swarms of blackbirds are around again and those are going to be the males so the males will come up earlier than the females they find a territory and then the females will come up and they all decide to find mates so the females don't come up for a little while and then I did see my first robins in my yard the other day, so they're slowly coming back. And then hummingbirds are starting to appear in the south, like there's a hummingbird migration map. They're kind of in the southern states at the moment. Um, they don't usually reach Illinois till the beginning of May, um, maybe in late April, not usually. Do you have like bird feeders? No. You don't have that? I'm surprised. <laughs> No, Come on, I, Megan. I live in the middle of the forest, technically. I don't know if a hummingbird would come find me. Oh, well, they might. Yeah. Put something out for them, they would. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. So what else are we talking about today? It's also starting to be mating season for small mammals. So definitely be out on the lookout for them on the roadways, because I know it doesn't seem like a coon is going to make a big dent in your car, but it will if you hit it hard enough. Um definitely be on the lookout and then so we have a fish and a tree sale going on oh, and okay. our tree sale was actually very successful um and thank you to everyone that ordered trees from us they'll be in the third week of april and we'll be calling everyone who purchased them just as a reminder but our fish sale if you want to buy fish you can still get your orders in until march 20th so now these would be fish for farm ponds yep primarily right so, yep um when i help i helped like bag them last year so there was a lot of um bluegill and catfish minnows stuff like that okay um, no goldfish no goldfish <laughs> no okay <laughs> um and then for crp it's Remember that nesting season for CRP is April 15th to August 1st. So if you need to mow, make sure that you have it done before then. And if you have any burning that needs to be done, make sure that that's done also. And speaking of burning, we actually hosted a burning um, workshop yesterday. Dave was the one that presented. Um, and it was a whole class on how to correctly burn, mm. like, your CRP or your grass or stuff like that. Um, we, How's Dave doing? So, I think he's enjoying retirement. Does he stop in every once in a while or no? Um, 
once in a great while we see him, but not very often. I think he's pretty busy um, doing his own thing. Yeah. He's, he's busy. <laughs> so that is good. So again, yeah. next Tuesday or next week. Next week. You're going to be in class. Yep. Best of luck to you on Thank that. Now, you. is there some field work involved with that as well, or are you so just yeah. generally in the classroom? Nope. Um, the second day of the class, we go out to a farm. Um, not really sure where um and we'll have they'll have a big pit dug so we'll see the layers of soil and we'll do some soil field tests okay. and learn about that people want to find out more information about what you do in whiteside county how can they best do that megan uh they can give us a call at 815-772-2124 extension three thank you so much good luck yes. to you down thank there thank you the Whiteside County Soil and Water Conservation District program with Megan Pettit is heard at 9.15 a.m. on the second Tuesday of every month on FM 105.9 and AM 1340, Caro S. And now, the, the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. <laughs>